First Sergeant Cap here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters. And I figured that since I was down in the shop today making Sanitary Commission ration bags, I would set up the camera and bring you along for the ride. Um, so today I'm making uh, ration bag kits for people in our company. And I'm going to prepare all the materials and then send them out to them so they can make them themselves. Um, right here, we have my interpretation of the Sanitary Commission's instructions. And to find the documentation, you can actually uh, find all the Sanitary Commission bulletins from the Civil War um, in Google uh, Books, Google Library. And um, on 697, we have directions for making ration bags. Ration bags should be made of enameled cloth. The four points should be sewed together so as to form a flat bottom and the side sewed up to make it into a bag. The top should be bound with cotton and tape strings run in. So you have uh, a sample pattern right here, sort of like your, your blueprint, which uh, I make big and but you can see in this short explanation uh, they leave a lot of kind of important information out so what I'm going to show you is my interpretation of the instructions out there um, in forums and online and in photos you'll 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 see different um, methods and uh, presentations of these bags but this this is the way I like to make them. Um, for one, um, it's not super detailed as to what it means by enameled cloth. Uh, we did a video on uh, painted cloth not too long ago, uh, but it doesn't say what color. Uh, it doesn't say what type of recipe you should use. Um, it's just that it should be painted. And uh, some of the stuff online, you'll see uh, different colors used. I'm not an expert in the Sanitary Commission uh, or their various sundry items. Um, the four points should be sewed together so as to form a flat bottom. So you can see we have four points. And then when you sew them all together, you get a nice, flat, upright standing bag. Um, then you have the side sewed up to make it into a bag. The top should be bound with cotton. Now, this is the part that I haven't, um, I might be a little bit different. So I don't know if everything I see online is just the way it, it's done. Um, but I feel like my tops are a little bit fancier than what you'll usually see. Uh, and when we get into the construction portion of this, um, I sew this top, this co it's just 100% cotton. Um, and I have it sewn to the top before I stitch the bag. Now, a lot of the stuff that you'll see out there, and also with the fact that the instructions that the uh, top should be bound with cotton uh, is one of the last instructions. So that would imply, you well, you could infer that um, the, the top was put on last. And that's what you'll see uh, in a lot of the samples. So instead of having this nice um, finished seam, right here on the bag, they would have just uh, folded the, the cotton and sewn it over the edge, and then the strings would come out, instead of these nice hand-sewn buttonholes, they would just come out of these raw edges. Now, um, if that's the way you wanna do it, by all means, have at it. I just, um, I prefer the, the appearance and the durability uh, of the more finished version, and I also think it'll add a lot more longevity. Um, when these were made, they weren't in intended to be heirloom items. So that's sort of um, really practical, quick finish of just adding the, the cotton to the top is uh, practical and it's totally up to you if that's how you want to do it. Um, but I'll show you how I do my, I guess, fancy version. And I'm kind of relying on the fact that the instructions are vague. Um, so if you had someone, you know, if you had a civilian on the, you know, at home, making these and you know donating them to the sanitary commission or sending them to their soldiers um 
if they are maybe more proficient at sewing, they might be more naturally inclined to create a, a, a finer version, which is kind of my take on it. Um, and then they are finished with uh, cotton strings, uh, well, tape strings. So this is cotton tape. Uh, I believe I got quarter inch. Yeah, so I'm using quarter inch cotton tape um, and I buy uh, my cotton tape from uh, Burnley and Trowbridge. So uh, for now, I am just going to start by pre-treating my stack of canvas squares with wallpaper size. Now, in our other video, we talked about this. Wallpaper size is uh, a great treatment uh, for your uh, for your textile, so that way it'll um, seal the pores uh, of the of the textile in our case canvas, and um, that will minimize or prevent bleed through of the paint. You're essentially giving um, the the paint a, a primer, a nice uh, base layer to to sit on. And so I'm going to put one coat of wallpaper size on one side of each of these uh, canvas blanks and allow it to dry. Then I'll paint, this is, this is two coats of semi-gloss. And I just personally really, I really like the, the appearance and the finish that this gets. And um, like we talked in our uh, other video, you may want gloss, you might want a different color. Uh, so the enamel portion is kind of up to you. Uh, but I tend to see uh, maybe a few more black ones than I do um, other colors available. So, and then once we have everything painted, it's time to make a pattern and get it sewn together and you're ready to stuff it with your rashes. So let's get started. So now that it's sized and I already have one coat of semi-gloss latex paint on here, uh, the first coat has dried thoroughly and um, the single coat of semi-gloss leaves a rather matte finish. And since you typically have to apply two coats to get maximum coverage, um, I found that with when I use the semi-gloss, I start to get that sheen on the second coat that I really like, as well as um, get the coverage that I need on that second pass. Because uh, you always have a few um, little spots in, in the canvas or the fabric that you're using um, that's, that misses a little bit of paint. So two coats is usually pretty standard. So now I just have to uh, put a second coat on all my blanks and then we'll be ready to start making them into ration bags. Once we have our pile of blanks painted and ready to go, it is time to start laying out, cutting, and sewing these things together. First, we have to make a full-scale version of this template as seen in the instructions. And all you need to do is get a nice uh, stout piece of uh, paper or cardstock and spend a little bit of time with some rulers and make a full-scale copy. Then um, you're ready to start laying out and cutting your fabric. So 
Um, when I make blanks, it's, it's easier for me to do small blanks because I'm usually using scrap canvas that I just have laying around. Um, but it's also a lot more manageable than painting large sheets of painted cloth. And it also helps me manage and minimize my waste. When I make my blanks, I make them just a little bit bigger than I need. And this allows me to compensate for any uh, shrinkage or warpage during the painting and treating process. Um, it also allows me to compensate for any um, sloppy paint work that I did. I dug through my pile and found my worst offender. So that way I can cut around uh, the worst of the overpainting. Um, and the other nice thing too is if you're doing a, a ton of these, you need to be able to move them around. So if you make them a little bit uh, oversized, then it's a little easier to grab the corners and move them around your workspace while still maintaining a, a nice usable surface. So once you have your template scaled up, all you have to do is lay it out. Yeah, you can trace it or you can cut directly from the template, but I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out and then we'll talk about sewing it together. Once you have your blank cut out and ready to go, it's time to start thinking about sewing. Um, but as I showed earlier, I, I make my personal bags a little bit different. Uh, I'm not a fan of unfinished edges. So before I sew the bag together, I'll sew the cotton binding uh, to the top. Now, uh, the instructions from the Sanitary Commission don't mention any instructions as to the size of the cotton binding. Um, it's just that it should be bound with cotton. So for my personal preference, I think a one inch uh, finished binding looks quite nice. And so I'll cut my blank um, two and a half inches because for this whole project, I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, so if you wanna make it bigger or smaller, or you, you're stitching it differently, You'll need to factor that into your layout. So for my uh, finished edge version, I'll take my right sides and I'll put them together and then I'll run a stitch securing the front together. So I'll stitch it down like that and then when that's all stitched, I'll fold it over So it'll look something like that. And then I will flat fell stitch the uh, inside uh, of the bag. Now, I sew most of the bag with a sewing machine. I just have some 100% cotton thread uh, set up. Um, but if you choose to hand sew uh, this whole project, if you don't already use one, now's a great time to get used to using a thimble. Uh, the painting definitely makes this a lot denser to sew through, so your fingers will greatly appreciate you using a thimble. Um, so uh, once I uh, flat fell this backside down, I'll trim, I'll trim my binding to, to length perfectly, and then I'll sew the rest of the bag together. That's the way I do it. Now, according to the instructions, the binding is like the last thing that you put on. So uh, to do that, uh, what you do is you start by sewing the bag. And the instructions say that the four points should be sewed together so as to form a flat bottom and the side sewed up to make it into a bag. So it sounds like this side seam is the last thing that you sew together. So uh, you'll of course want to sew right sides together and I'm just going to kind of show you um, by kind of putting it together with my hands because it's going to be uh, difficult to show you on the sewing machine. So you essentially kind of fold it like this and then you push in and there you see your stitching lines. So you have one kind of going this way and you have one going that way and then you finish you would finish the side last um i actually don't 
know if I pay attention to how I uh, sew all the edges together. I just know that um, they should all be uh, sewn like that because then when you turn it inside out, you'll get a nice flat bottom to hold your rations in. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get to sewing this and then we'll meet back to put on some binding. Now that we have our four points stitched together, it's time to turn this thing inside out. Uh, this fabric is going to be pretty stiff, so, so take your time, be patient with it. The nice thing about these ration sacks is they can really help keep things more organized and a little cleaner uh, in your haversack since the, the paint is going to give you a little bit of protection from, from leakage. Make sure you try to turn your corners out. Seams all the way out so you get all your size. And then so I'm gonna put my fist in there. There, and you get your flat bottom ration bag. Just like that. So <clears throat> now is the time in the instructions where we should bind with cotton tape. So um, you'll probably want to have your uh, drawstring. Uh, for the drawstring, I use uh, this quarter inch uh, cotton tape that I get from Burnley and Trowbridge. So you'll probably want that to come out here on your seam line. That's where I do it on my on the other bags that I make. So. This part can be pretty fiddly. So do yourself a favor and go ahead and pre-press uh, like I've done your cotton binding. And then kind of line everything up. And then you'll want to, and this also includes if you, if you press over a seam allowance, that's going to give you a good, a good way to judge your alignment, because this is this is one of those tricky things. That I mean, you want it to look nice, and doing it this way makes it a little challenging. So you'll you'll have a little bit of a guy that you can feel and see, as you as you wrap and pin this around the top of your bag, and then the edges here is where the string will come out of. Now I've seen these just raw as is. Um, you could probably uh, fold this over on the inside and stitch it and have this edge finished. Um, or you could just leave it raw because these were intended to be fairly consumable items. So I don't think they would have been that fancy. So you'll want to work your way around and pin as you go, checking alignment carefully. There we go. We have our cotton binding stitched to the top. Um, it was very fiddly. I can't say I cared, cared for it, um, but it's on. It works. And we have our two open edges right here. And that's where we are going to feed our cotton tape. And to feed it through, all I do is I just Put one end on the safety pin and then feed it in. Now to attach the top, I just um, 
swapped out uh, for a, a zipper foot and I changed to um, just regular white cotton uh, thread to match the binding on the top. Now they make handy little tools like these threaders um, for doing this sort of thing, but I find on uh, small poke sack style bags like this um, that a safety pin is a little, a little easier to use. And then you just pull out however much you think you want. I always try to leave a little bit extra because then I'll just tie a little knot on the end. And then you just fill in your rations and then cinch up your bag and you are ready to go. Now, if you would like a copy of these instructions as well as a link to the um, uh, complete book that I found this in, uh, I'll have that linked down in the, in the description, and I'll also have a uh, blog post with more links on our website at secondusss.com. Um, I hope this uh, has been a fun project for you to, to try out. Um, let us know if you have any questions down below. Thanks, as always, for liking and subscribing, and we'll see you next time.